begin to worry. We begin to uh, talk to others about. But we as Christians are to do what when we are faced with trials? Call on Jesus. Call on call on God. Call on Jesus. Last week first it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And the title was Stop Worrying and Start Seeking. Once we stop worrying about the trials of life, because here it is. Trials tribulations are inevitable. Everyone experiences them. If someone were to say they never had a bad day in their life, I wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> what what we're going to keep going? Just keep on living. Because in this, in this flesh, as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to experience something Even though we call on the Lord, we still need to keep a positive outlook that the Lord will bring us through. Okay. 
the, but the, the, the joy of it is while I'm waiting on God, I will smile in the midst of pain. It's called going through the storm.
steadfast, unmovable, seated uh, and placed in God, then you will be more agitated and in anguish rather than in hope of God delivering. And I would rather sit comfortable knowing that my God is faithful, knowing that my faith stands strong, than always being in an attitude, in anguish, in desperation, because I don't know the next move. A way to the sea is without rest, and, is, and so is the doubt. A way to the sea is unstable, and so is the doubt. A way to the sea is driven by the wind. A way to the sea is capable of great destruction. But blessed is the man who endures temptation. Because as verse 8 says, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, we see the promise of wisdom, God promising to give each man wisdom liberally. They're asking in faith, knowing that God will provide. If we go to the next slide, persevering in trial. Verse 12 through 15, if someone could read that for us. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath con has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is uh, finished, bringeth forth death. Amen. So, verse 12, James, he continues with, blessed is the man that endures temptation, that takes on his faith in temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which God has promised him. So we are, James says, we are blessed when we are in trials and tribulation and blessed even more when we stand in faith in the midst of trial. And, and here it is, and being even so comfortable in your faith that you know that God will provide. And so, here it is in verse 12. He says, he shall receive the crown of life. He shall receive a reward for this type of faith. I don't know about you, but when I have done some hard work, I would love a reward at the end. Uh, when, when, I, when, I, when I go to the gym, I've worked out, and oh, the whole week, I have this thing called a cheat day. And on my cheat day, I eat for one meal, whatever I want to eat. And so that's my little reward to myself for doing so good. <laughs> it, I, I, didn't, I didn't do my usual um, coffee and donuts, and I love those things, but I reward myself at the end. And so... That, all, that also goes to say, God rewards us when we stay consistent. God rewards us also when we stay persistent. Consistent in his word, persistent in the faith. Also, I have a question. This verse 12 that James writes, what does this sound like in the Bible? He said, blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. I'll give you a hint. It's in the gospel. The Beatitudes. 500 points for Sister Hyatt. No, 
This is what <laughs> the Beatitudes. So this sounds like one of Jesus' Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, 1 through 12. Also, notice what it does not say. It does not say, blessed is the man who is never tempted. Nor does it say, blessed is the man who finds all temptation easy to conquer. Because temptation, if it was easy to conquer, we would never get it. If someone who is tempted with addiction could easily say, I don't want that anymore, they wouldn't be tempted. Temptation also, look at this, it says, let no, in verse 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither temp tempteth he any man. Look at this, Satan's job, one of his jobs is to tempt you, to lead you astray. To get you away from God, to get you away from, here it is, that verse 12, that reward, that crown of life. Also notice this, there's Bible to back that up. Job was not tempted by God. There's a difference. The devil tempts, God tests. The devil tempts you with evil of the things that, like, like it says, the lust of the eyes, what you like, what, what he knows you like. That's temptation. A test is God testing your faith to see how much you trust him. Not how much he sees that you can see him, to see how much you can trust him. Temptation, test, trust. Three, three words that I that are hidden right there in verse 13. It says, but every man is tempted. All of us are tempted. Not some of us. Also, the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody can say, y'all have sinned <laughs> and fallen short. We all deal with this thing called life. We all have a trial, a struggle that we have dealt with, or even here it is, are now dealing with. My immaturity when I was 12 uh, or 11 years old being in church was when I get older, I'm not going to see it no more. When I get about 25, the Lord is going, uh, is going to re, uh, renew me of my sins. No more sin for William. But that's not true. And so sin is this thing that we are, are going to always be faced with. Because Satan, again, he wants to lead us astray. So, Joanne. I was going to say, God does not tempt us, but he allows things to happen in our life. Mm -hmm. Again, look at this. Even to go further with Job, God said, Satan, try my servant. He didn't say tip my servant. Try my servant. Watch him pass this test. And, and even to say, Job was a very strong man. To have everything stripped away, away from you and you still say, with sickness in your body, your wife is gone, your kids are dead, all the money you had depleted, all the, all the land you have gone, all the crops that you've developed is gone, and you still say, for God I live, and for God I'll die. That, yes. Mm -hmm. Can we get, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he, he knew Job. He knew that Job would pass it. Mm -hmm. That's why he presented him. Mm -hmm. He knew in advance. And also, we have to build up to that maturity in our faith. 
Yes. And we have to practice our faith. We have to practice our faith. All right. We, Ms. Blue, we get a mic for Mr. Blue. The point that was made by uh, that the fact that God knew Job uh, would, would pass this test. But the other question I always look at, what Job didn't know. Job didn't know that he was capable. God knew. Mm -hmm. And the test comes. The, the, the wisdom aspect of this scripture points to the fact of the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of man. So God knew, is your example, what Job was capable of. But through the test and the trials, God, uh, Job began to realize the wisdom of God and what God his faith that God had in him. So the faith that God had in Job began to manifest into Job. Mm -hmm. And that same faith that God has for Job, now Job realized, I got it. But I just didn't get it just by living. I got it through the test of the trials of life. Amen. And Amen. hence, that's the blessing amid trials. Amen. The blessing is knowing without a doubt that God's got you and you're going to make it through. Yes, ma'am. Amen. I, 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 was, I was just thinking while you all were speaking. I was thinking of an, another person, and actually James as well. I was thinking of someone else that stood close with Jesus every day. Yeah. Judas yeah. walked with Jesus every day, seeing him do all of these miracles, seeing him heal the sick, seeing him overthrow the synagogue, seeing him talk to the, Jew, the, talk to the Jews however he wanted to, and still stood as the authoritative son of God. And yet through all that, Judas' test was, are you going to stay with the master or are you going to sell him out? So God knew. Jesus knew. Also, look at this. James did not believe this is my own brother. Yeah. Did not believe Jesus was the son of God until after Jesus died and rose. That also, something, something uh, that my mother would say to me growing up, show me better than you can tell me. They had to be shown. But here it is. The word tells us before it's shown to us. Tells us who the Son of God is. And our faith is showing that we believe. So, the crown of life, we, we have the reward by enduring temptation. No temptation from God means God does not tempt us. He tests us as his children. Lust, sin, and death, here it is, verse 15. Then when lust have con conceived, a bringer forth sin. Temptation is what you like, which turns into lust, which also, which also is derived from sin. The big picture in all of this is sin can corrupt you. However, faith is what you can operate in the midst of your trial in the midst of your tent. We won't go on to the next slide and we'll be out of here. Last we have perfect gifts from above. Verse 16, verses 16 through 18. If someone could read that for us. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. Amen. So it says, do not err. Who, who can tell me what that word err could have meant? Mistake. Right. right. Or also, do not wander away or be deceived. 
Every good gift and perfect gift is from God. God rains down faith in our lives. He rains down blessings in our lives. And so also it says, coming down from the Father of lights. We learned in a few uh, uh, Sunday um, lessons ago that God is the God of light. Meaning he reveals to us in no secret place, but, all, but in all openness. This, mean, this also means that word for the father of light, this means that God never changes. And also, it also is also said that God is maturing and growing and in process and, and also it means that there's no variation of shadow of turning with God. Because God who willingly blesses us, keeps us, sustains us. He's, James is saying to us, Don't, do not waver in the midst of your storm. God has your back. Do not, do not think wondrous thoughts. When your mind begins to wonder, you take the focus off of the main view. And so we as Christians, we as the believers of God, Christ reconnects us by saying, you must have faith. You must believe. Also, I love, I love the word. John eloquently says, this, says it in, jo in um, John chapter 1 of the gospel, verse 1. He says, in the beginning was the what? The word. And the word was? God. And the word was with God. God. And the word became flesh. This word became flesh. James is not saying about, talking about an old Jesus, a dead Jesus. He's talking about a Jesus who was alive. This word made flesh. That's the beauty of, of God's word. That his word is put into fruition. That also says God's word lives within us. And I don't think God is subject to defamation of character. <clears throat> he's always been who he says he's been. He's never turned his back on us. He's never led us astray. When you start to think about how many times you've made it over, how many situations you've got through, how many trials you've endured, you start to think it was nobody but God. Yes, we had people in our lives to talk to. Yes, we had some support systems. But all in all, the big picture is it was nobody but God. But God. I was going to say, we have to learn not to trust in our feelings because we can wake up disturbed, confused. We have to go to God. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Not to, not to trust in our feelings. Feelings are natural. Feelings are natural. But feelings should not control us. Anger shouldn't control you in the midst of your trial or your, in the midst of your temptation or in the midst of your challenge. Faith amongst feelings. Feelings can fade away. Faith must remain. You know, the, the Bible answers every single question and gives us guidance. And in that verse 2 and 3, I'm sorry, 3 and 4, it says, do you want to know how to have no lack in your life? Do you want to know how to have a perfect life wanting nothing? And it tells us how to do that, mm -hmm. even in the midst of trials. Mm -hmm. Let your faith 
work is patience, mm -hmm. and then let patience have its perfect work, mm -hmm. so that you will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Mm -hmm. And to me, that means the reason that you can lack nothing is that because you have that faith in God and you've allowed it to be perfected. And knowing that you have God means you will never lack anything, mm -hmm. even in the midst of your trials. Mm -hmm. If you think about this, children of Israel, they, tur they turn their backs on God every chance they got. <laughs> they, they, were, they were not steadfast in the faith, and they had a direct communication to God. Even lacking, in their, even lacking in their faith, God still provided for them. Amen. Look at this. Even us lacking in our faith sometimes, because we can't say that we've been the strongest of the strongest of Christians all of our lives. No. Even lacking in our faith, God still provides for us. How does he provide? Well, he woke us up this morning. When last night should have been our last night, he still got us up this morning. <laughs> I've gotten happy. I'm sorry, you all. But even if he didn't wake us up this morning, we still praise him because we, we still, know where we're going. We still. Still. Because it is, it, this all derives from our faith. We talked about that patience, and, I, and, I'm, and, we're, and we're done. Again, patience in the Greek verbiage of, of the text is shupomon, and it does not describe a passive waiting but an active endurance, meaning I can stay in the midst of, of this hellish situation and still know that my God is in control. Now, I'm not waiting for the storm to pass. I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to rush the storm. I can sit in it and cruise in it. Put my faith on cruise control and let it go. Amen. The blessing amid trials. So this week, uh, actually, let's go to the uh, last slide. What we see today's aim. Today's aim to understand the facts, to understand that the purpose of trials and temptations is to develop patience. The principle of the text to teach that trials and temptations in the lives of believers help make them strong in their faith. And lastly, the application, how we apply this to our own lives to help students learn to endure trials and temptations, knowing that the Lord is perfecting our faith. Amen. 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 And so we have uh, journeyed into, um, journey through James chapter 1, verses 1 through 8 and 12 through 18. Um, the trial before glory that Jesus had to endure, the trial was the cross. But the crown of life is when he rose back up on the third day. Next week we'll be uh, in Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, talking about the blessing of God's comfort. Amen. Allow us to um, go forward and today with our early morning worship experience that will be happening in just a few short moments. Uh, allow us to bow our heads and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this moment of liberation. God, thank you for the opening up of our minds. Lord, right now we give you praise and we give you thanks because we see that in the midst of our storm, God, you will give us wisdom if we lack faith. And so God, with us being a faith-based community, we ask, God, for your peace. We ask for your understanding, oh God. We ask that you continue to pour into us. Lord, we want to be a staple. We want to be an example of faith, oh God. And so, Lord, we thank you that even in the midst of trials and tribulations, Satan does not get the glory, but you get all the glory. And for that, we do say thank you. So, God, we ask that you continue to allow to, to be steadfast and unmovable in our own lives. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless our families, our homes, our situations. Bless the early morning worship experience. Bless our pastor with the word. 
Bless those that are waiting to come in. Bless those that are at home viewing uh, the worship experience. We thank you and we do love you. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> Make sure to like and follow us on social media. Look up St. Timothy Community Church on Facebook or visit our website at www.stTimothyChurch.org. Share this with your family and friends. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Have a blessed week.